I was phoned the other night in the middle of dinner by an earnest young man named Spencer. Uh, hello? Hi, my name is Spencer and I'm doing a phone survey. Would you have a few minutes to answer some questions? Now, rather than hang up, I agreed to answer his questions. He asked me if I knew a soda tax would be on the ballot in Berkeley in November. When I said yes, he then asked whether I trusted the Berkeley city government to spend the revenues wisely. At that moment, I recognized a classic push-pull, which is part of a paid political campaign. So I asked Spencer a couple of questions of my own. Uh, Spencer, who is financing your survey? Americans for Food and Beverage Choice? Hmm. Well, who finances them? Uh, the American Beverage Association. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I have to go. Spencer hung up so quickly I didn't get to ask him my third question. Who was financing the American Beverage Association? Didn't matter. I knew the answer. PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. Welcome to Berkeley, California, my hometown, and ground zero for the soda wars. We know sugary drinks are contributing to chronic disease and obesity in America. Two out of three adults and one out of three children in the United States are overweight. And the nation spends an estimated $190 billion a year treating obesity-related health problems. A typical 20-ounce soda contains 15 to 18 teaspoons of sugar and upwards of 240 calories. A 64-ounce fountain cola drink can have up to 700 calories. Now, here is what that much sugar means to your body. People who consume sugary drinks regularly, one to two cans a day or more, have a 26% greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes than people who rarely have such drinks. For every additional 12-ounce soda children drink each day, the odds of them becoming obese increase by 60% in the following year and a half. Now, the thing is, we actually have some good ideas about how to curb these alarming statistics. Taxing a product to reduce its consumption is a tried and true public policy. Just look at what happened with cigarettes. According to the American Cancer Society, every 10% increase in the cost of a pack of cigarettes has caused a 4% decline in the rate of smoking. But four years ago, the Supreme Court decided corporations are people under the First Amendment, entitled to their own freedom of speech. And since then, Big Soda has poured a fortune into defeating ballot initiatives to tax or regulate sugar drinks. Some 30 special taxes on sugary drinks have been introduced in various states and cities around the country, but none has passed. Not even California's legislature with Democratic majorities in both houses, could enact a proposal putting warning labels on soda, even though polls showed more than two-thirds of Californians supported a soda tax. So now the soda war has come to Berkeley, California. And if a soda tax can't pass in Berkeley, perhaps the most progressive city in America, it can't pass anywhere. Big Soda knows that which is why it's determined to kill it here. So far, it's spent $800,000 in this city of 112,000 people, roughly 10 times what the supporters of the tax have raised. Locals say Big Soda is breaking all previous records for spending on ballot measures. Berkeley's soda war pits a group of community organizations, city and school district officials, and other individuals, full disclosure, I'm one of them, against Big Soda's own so-called grassroots group, describing itself as a coalition of citizens, local businesses, and community organizations without identifying any of its members. This is regular people against the flood of corporate money that has engulfed our politics and legislative battles across America. And up until now, big money has won every time. But this has to change. Fifty years ago, Berkeley's free speech movement captured the nation's attention and imagination. It signaled a fundamental shift in the attitudes of young Americans toward older forms of authority. If Berkeley can defeat Big Soda, it will be a win that's about more than just soda. It will say to Big Money, you can't push citizens around. Our voices are going to be heard. In its battle with Big Soda, Berkeley may once again make history.